Well, hello, hello, everybody. It's Yun Cannon here. I'm excited to tackle the topic of motivating your team in today's episode. Whether you're listening in from the East Coast, the West Coast, maybe you live in Europe or UK, whatever time zone you're in, I want to tell you I am honored and privileged to have you join this conversation. You know, when it comes to business growth, one of the most common challenges I hear from SMBs is how to keep your people highly motivated. If you're a business owner or a sales manager, you know that bringing out the best in your people, it's not always easy, but I got to tell you, it is worth it. We all want to attract self-motivated people, but the reality is like anything else, when left neglected, the natural effect is people tend to lose motivation. And when that happens, performance falls flat. Then the added problem is the lack of motivation is contagious. And when that is left unmanaged, it spreads like a virus to the rest of your team and it pulls everybody down like a dead weight. So if you're leading a team who's not performing at their full potential, the easy thing to do is dictate, shape up or ship out, right? But that military style of leadership, it might give you the illusion you're running a tight ship, but it only leads to just high turnover and that's costly. The best route, in my opinion, to creating highly motivated, high-performing teams, it begins with creating a culture of personal development. That's the harder thing to do. But when you shift to inspire and empower your people, you end up reaping loyalty and personal excellence from people who want to grow with you for the long haul. So I'm going to share with you five foundational success principles for you to take back to your businesses and you can teach, preach, and reinforce in your organization to empower their self-motivation to personal excellence. So grab a piece of paper because I want you to write down today's date. And when you look back on this episode that you're listening to, and you look back on this month, this week, this day, as the day that you finally bought into the power of goal setting for your people. You know, your life and their life should be a constant quest towards something. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. As they say, no goals, no glory. Now, if you ask people, what's your goal? I bet you you're going to get a lot of answers like, hey, my goal is to be rich and happy. But being rich and happy is not really a goal. Those are byproducts of setting the right goals. And I got to tell you, I meet a lot of people in life who don't succeed, but I rarely meet people who can't succeed. And the reason why they don't is that they don't understand why goals are so important and how to set them. And that's why today I want to focus in on this, uh, these three pieces, you know, why goals are so important to their success for your people. Why do your people not set goals? And then how do you teach them to set a goal? All right, so let's tackle why goals are so important. Well, number one, the right goal is what gives them purpose. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. In fact, literally, uh, Harvard Business Review, they published a study where they concluded people are likely to live longer if they retire after 65 and a big factor that they found is that of course people stopped having a purpose and a goal to work towards when they stopped working so the right goal gives your people purpose it also fuels motivation jc penny said it like this he said give me a stock clerk with a goal and i will give you a man who will make history but give me a man without a goal and i will give you a stock clerk pretty powerful, right? You know, the real work isn't the hard work or the actual function you perform. The real work is getting excited about your work. And that's what takes work, doesn't it? So the right goal gives them purpose. The right goal will fuel their motivation. And the third piece is the right BHAG goal creates excitement. Now, if you don't know what BHAG is, it stands for Big, Hairy, Audacious Goal, right? If it's not a BHAG kind of goal, it's not going to take them out of their comfort zone and it's not going to challenge 
and stretch them to see what they're really capable of. And really the same thing applies to you as a goal that you have for your organization. Are you stretching yourself to see what you're really capable of? You know, studies found people are happier working towards goals than actually achieving them. I see it in my, uh, my kids too. My oldest son, Thomas, he had the privilege as a freshman to be a part of his high school varsity soccer team the year they won state championships. Now, everybody on the team not only worked incredibly hard that year, you know, they all started training from a very young age to achieve that kind of level of mastery. And when they won, I'll tell you, my son glowed, you know, sharing how incredible it was to win the state cup. And he just said it was like, well, I don't think this was his exact words, but you know, I translated it as a sweet taste of victory, right? To be celebrated by the entire town in a parade that they gave. But I gotta tell you now, he's in college and he looks back on that moment and he sees it as just that. He sees that big win, that big, hairy, audacious goal that they achieved as just one moment in time. But what he remembers really today is how much happier and how excited he was uh, in the years that he gave it his all training towards that goal. So we see it on the sports field. What about in your business? What would be an epic win for you and your team? Because if it's not a big enough goal that losing doesn't hurt very much and winning isn't very exciting, then you didn't pick the right BHAG goal. All right, why do people not set goals? Well, two reasons. If you look at your organization, number one, they don't know how. And number two, people inherently have a fear of failure. All right, so how do you eliminate fear? Well, you change your view and perspective around failing. As they say, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Now, everybody at one time or another, you know, they feel the fear of failure and rejection. That's normal. But successful people aren't people who don't feel those fears. They manage to master their emotions by changing their belief about failure. And I just want to encourage you, embrace the wisdom of Henry Ford when he said, failure is just the opportunity to begin again more intelligently. And remember that failure is success if we learn from it. And how can you indoctrinate that perspective in your people? In fact, you know what? If they're not failing, they're not growing. Personal growth never comes from successes. Personal growth, it only comes from hard times and failures. So help your people embrace a new definition of failure and really the benefits of what it's gonna do and produce in them. You know, how many of us have read the Dr. Seuss books to our kids? But you know what? His first book was rejected 27 times. So the emphasis for your people is, hey, it's okay to fail, but it's not okay to not try. So keep that in mind why people don't set goals. And as you're thinking about the people on your team, you really want to be able to find out and evaluate, do they know how to set goals and where are they at in managing their fear of failure? All right. So the third piece I want to talk about today with goal setting and helping you create highly motivated, high performing teams is then how do we teach your team to set the right goals? So I have a couple of thoughts on that. So number one, as you're writing down your notes, right, is uh, start with the ultimate BHAG goal. And when you start with a BHAG goal, that big, hairy, audacious goal, that's really forms as the long-term goal. What is the epic big win for them, right? And so for some people, it depends on what position or the type of person, but a long-term goal could be a year from now. A long-term goal could be three to five years for some people. But what is that epic win that would really get them stoked? You know, as, as they say, life is full of short-term disappointments, but long-range goals keep you from short-term frustrations. Because you know, as a business owner and a manager, that that's gonna happen. People will go into 
uh, dealing with uh, frustrations and obstacles. The second point I want to make about helping them start with an ultimate BHAG goal is get them to write a date down and to write down what their goal is. Sounds simple, but I got to tell you, so many people aren't doing it. They have a goal in their head, but they don't have a goal written down. So a goal that's not written down is just a nice idea. Get your people to write it down, articulate it, and put a date on it. And the third thing I want to say about that would be break it down then from that long-term goal into midterm and short-term goals. And I like to do short-term as 10-day sprints, okay? Because everybody is so busy and there's so many priorities that uh, bottle up your <laughs> daily to-do list that you want to focus on being able to get something done in 10 days. All right, so how to teach them to set the right goals. We talked about setting the ultimate BHAG goal. The, the next point would be having a compelling why. This is huge. Have your people list all the benefits of hitting that goal. So have them define what would achieving their BHAG goal allow them to have that they don't have now. What would it allow them to do that they can't do now? Who will it allow them to become in the process? And the magic behind this, this is just a, an incredible exercise that I would recommend you do for yourself as well. So you lead by example in writing down what your BHAG goal is for your organization and what is your why? Why do you do what you do and why do you want to hit that goal? Why is what makes those BHAG goals worthwhile. A clear, compelling why is what makes those big goals worth committing to. It's not a worthwhile goal if losing doesn't hurt very much and winning isn't very exciting. And a goal that's casually set and lightly taken will be freely abandoned at its first obstacle. So. We talked about the power of goal setting, why people should be setting goals, the power of it, why they don't set goals, and how to teach them how to do it. Wrapping up, I want you to reflect. Whether you're a business owner, the CEO, or you're a sales manager, I want you to reflect what is your core belief around creating high-performing teams? Do you believe that people should always be self-motivated? And if that's the case, How's that working for you? Well, I believe that winning teams are cultivated. You know, NFL teams recruit the top self-motivated, high-performing football players, but every team still got a coach, you know, and his job is to bring out the best in his players. So if you wish your employees were more motivated, if you want a sales team to be rock star players, don't forget, you are their coach. You are the coach for the organization. So I challenge you to teach, preach, and reinforce these foundational goal setting skills for your people. Now, some of you might not be old enough to know who Vince Lombardi is, but those of you who remember him, I do love his quote, treat them as champions and they will play like champions. All right, so I open this episode welcoming you to the discussion so I really do want to hear what you've got to say about this topic. Please share your comments, your wisdom, your questions in the comment section below, and I will read every response and reply as well. All right, so while you're here, download my free checklist on creating high-performing teams. That'll come straight to your inbox. That's a wrap for my thoughts today on bringing out the best in your people, creating high-performing teams. If you're interested in getting help creating a culture of personal development in your organization, email me at yun at paramountbusinesscoach.com. That's yun, Y-O-O-N, at paramountbusinesscoach.com. Have a great week, everybody. Mm -hmm.